When my daughter asked me to make this wine cabinet with a cork and epoxy top, I thought, no problem, that'll be an easy and fun project. Just some deep pour epoxy over some wine corks. Good to this point, but my next step took a bad turn, caused a lot of extra work. I'll go through the mistakes I made and how I recovered from them in just a minute, but first a few comments on how I made the frame. I started by milling down some pieces of cherry to a consistent thickness for the frame at the top. You can see here in the background the partially made cabinet. I'll do a separate video on making the cabinet itself. So in this video, I'll just be making the cork and epoxy top of the cabinet. This notch that I'm cutting with the router is for a quarter inch plywood base. Just simple 45 degree miter joints, not particularly strong on their own, but they'll be encased in epoxy, so I'm not at all concerned about them cracking over time. I'm using the stop on the miter saw for the repeated cuts to get an exactly consistent length and therefore a perfectly rectangular top. The strap clamp makes gluing up super easy and holds the miter joints until the glue's dry. And I'm using some brad nails to secure the quarter inch plywood base while the glue sets up. At this point, I'd already sanded all of the inside surfaces. They'll be stained and visible in the final piece. And so the blue painter's tape here is just to help control the glue squeeze out. So after the glue is dry, I'm using a router to put a round over on the sides and the front, and then I sand it all and get it ready to finish. I'm staining the top at the same time as the whole cabinet so I can get a good consistent color and darkness. Cherry can get really blotchy when applying a dark stain if you're not careful. The process I'm using here is the best that I've been able to find at getting a blotch free dark stain on cherry. I made a separate video on how to do this so I won't go into too many details here. Just in summary, after sealing the grain with shellac, I'm applying a gel stain, and then I use a tinted lacquer to dial in the color and the darkness that I'm looking for. The first step with the epoxy is to pour a really thin layer that'll be used to glue the corks down so when I do the deeper pour later that the corks won't float. I'm using a wine colored mica powder with the idea that it'll look like spilled wine under the corks. I'll leave a link in the description for the specific mica powder as well as everything I'm using in the video. After stirring for about three minutes, I'm just checking to see if I got enough mica powder. I want it to be opaque, even with a really thin layer, and it looks pretty good, so it's time to pour it in. I spent a lot of time swirling it to make it look good. I'd swirl it, then wait an hour, let it settle out, then swirl it again, then pop the bubbles. This went on for like six to eight hours. The next time I do this, I'm not gonna use this deep pour epoxy for this step because the setup time is just too long. Maybe use an art epoxy or something that sets up a bit quicker. This layer is only eighth of an inch deep, so the deep pour really just isn't needed for this. So after mostly all day of waiting for this epoxy layer to firm up a little bit, it's time to place the corks. The epoxy is pretty viscous at this point, like more so than molasses. And also, I just kind of had to laugh at myself because with the pattern that I used to place the corks, you really could barely even see the wine color epoxy below and you really can't see the swirls. So that whole day I spent babysitting the swirls every hour, probably not worth it. 
Okay, so this is now about 12 hours after the initial pour of the red epoxy, about five hours after I placed the corks. The corks are pretty solidly in place, although the red epoxy is still tacky to the touch. By doing the next layer of epoxy before the previous layer completely sets up, then hopefully it'll create a pretty good bond between the layers of epoxy. I'm just painting over the corks with a clear deep pour epoxy with the idea that it'll seal things up pretty good and reduce the number of bubbles that I get in the deep pour. I'm not sure corks really release many bubbles anyway, so this step just may not have been necessary, but it made me feel better, so I did it. It's now about 24 hours after the initial red epoxy pour and about 12 hours after the seal coat over the corks. The deep pour goes great. I stopped at the perfect point, filled to the edge and not overflowing, and I should have stopped here, let the deep pour solidify, and then come back the next day with tabletop epoxy. But I thought, I'll just go ahead and let the deep pour spill over the edges, but this was a huge mistake. It looked great initially, but this stuff is just too runny and too slow to set up that it drained around the edges really unevenly by the time it solidified many hours later. Now I've got an ugly mess to deal with. The solution is to sand it down, then use the proper tabletop epoxy to finish it with. But well, I'm really concerned about sanding through to the wood since the wood is stained and I don't want to nick the stain with the sandpaper. So what I did was sand a little bit, about as much as I thought I could do without exposing the wood. Then I put on a layer of tabletop epoxy, wait a couple days for it to cure, then sand again and then put on another layer. So I did this three times over the course of a week and finally started to get a good result on the tabletop epoxy. I would say that it never really got to the ultimate quality that I would aspire to, and hopefully I'll get better on my next similar project. After all the epoxy work was done, I used a flush trim bit on the router to cut off the drips. The cork bar top is attached to the cabinet with some adhesive epoxy because I didn't want to try to drive screws up into the corks where they might be seen. All in all, I think the cabinet came out pretty good, and a huge shout out to my daughter for coming up with the idea for this cabinet. Thanks so much for watching.